Hello, my fellow chatterers and book lovers, and anyone else who's popped in because you're curious or you've got a bit lost. Welcome. Anyway, I am Chatty, and this is my channel, Chatty the Mad Chatter, and I'm going to be chatting away madly about the Read What You Own challenge and where we are with it. So uh, it's January, in the new year, January 2023, um, and I've got my book with me. So this is where I've been logging what I have been doing for the Read What You Own challenge. Um, and I started writing it when I did my first video before I realised I'd miscounted. So it's actually 169, it's my physical TBR. And so my goal was, well, to make it back to 139, I'd need to read 30 books. But I said 21. So 21 is what we're sticking with um, because it's a big jump. <laughs> So February 2023, I need to read 21 books and then I will buy more books. Um, and by that, it means um, I will be getting the new releases that are coming out February, March time. So that is Rainbow Grey, uh, the third book in the Rainbow Grey series, which I think is Battle for the Skies. It's called Battle for the Skies and it's by Laura Ellen Anderson. And I'm really excited. Um, and then coming out in March, we have... Um, the Rise of Onyeka and the Rise of the Rebels, which is the second Onyeka book. And we also have the second in the Elysium Bell Mysteries, which is um, Poisons and Portraits. Um, and that is by JT Williams. And um, Onyeka is by Tola Oguru. So I'm really excited for all those books. So that's the motivation. Because <laughs> usually what I do with books is I buy them and put them under my bed. And then I have to earn them with healthy points. It's a complicated system, but it works for me and I have that sorted. So how have I been doing? So from November, I have read, and then I haven't continued my little colouring in games. I've just been writing, um, <laughs> but I hope to. Um, so we have got to eight. There we go. Last one was a rabble of drabbles and doodles. I've read eight. And, um, and now it's confession time. My name is Chatty, the Mad Chatter, and it has been two months since my last confession about book buying. I didn't make it. I got to eight. I got to eight. Didn't even do half. Didn't even do half. So, several reasons. <clears throat> First of all, being that I have no willpower. Second, being I stupidly thought I'd just see the exact dates that certain things were coming out because I wanted to pre-order um, the books that I am really excited about because I want to support the authors. If you pre-order books, it supports the authors and that helps them. And I wanted to, um, particularly um, JT Williams and Tola Oguru because um, they are newer authors, um, th these are their second books. Um, so I wanted to show my support for them by doing some pre-orders. Whilst I was doing that, Waterstones have a 75% sale! 75! Not everything was 75, but 75 to 50%. And there were lots of books on there that I have been resisting throughout the year because there's so many books, there's so many books, but I keep seeing them. I keep seeing them and seeing them and seeing them. I was like, I really want that book, really want that book. And then seeing it half price, it's just like, I could wait, I could wait, like my goal says, but then it wouldn't be a half price. So I could, but I didn't. Um, so I'm going to share what, um, I'm going to share my Achilles heel. And then I'm going to talk about getting back on this wagon again <laughs> and what we're going to do. Uh, so first, let's do the fun thing and look at the books because they're so pretty. So first of all, I have the um, second book by Kieran Millwood Hargrave in this sort of illustrated children's book. Um, so I have Julia and the Shark, I still need to read. Um, and this is the second one, this is Leela and the Blue Fox. And it is beautiful. So Julia and the Shark had this yellow colour, Leela and the Blue Fox has a blue colour which sort of runs throughout it. So we have these lovely pops of colour. So we've got fish going across this page behind all the writing. We've got black and white illustrations and the only thing is blue. Um, we've got the blue sort of painted sky here. So it is just a really, really beautiful book. 
so again more blue underneath the writing and then we've got this sort of like charcoal hand drawing of this little fox cub here um, and it's hardback and this was half price so i paid half the amount of money you would normally pay for it and it's been one that i've been sort of looking at on and off going i would like that it would be nice to have that i would like that next up we have <laughs> oh and the art is by um tom defresco next up we have um the Heartstopper yearbook, which um, I was aware of before it was coming out. It was on my list. Should I pre-order it? Should I not pre-order it? Um, graphic novels are expensive. So I was like, oh, it'll be around for a while. It's not like it's a book that's suddenly going to disappear. This is a book that is going to be around for a while. I will resist. So seeing it half price, I didn't resist. I stopped resisting. And again, it's just got gorgeous illustrations in. So look, here we go. We've got Nick on this page and it's all in colour. All of it's in colour. Look how cute Charlie and Nick are. They're falling asleep over there studying. And then we've got little brother and dogs. It's just, it just looks so cute. I haven't read it. I haven't, I haven't even read some of the bits inside. I've just, just now when I did that, I just flicked through the illustrations. So hot stop a yearbook. <laughs> and then I have a novel that I've been hearing amazing things about this year. It is a fan, it's the first in a fantasy, I don't know if it's a duology or trilogy, but um, this is a book that I know um, Jessie from Bow Ties and Books has been raving about so much on her channel. I also know that Jashona loved it, I know that Jessie May loved it, um, actually I don't know if she loved it, it could have been, uh, anyway, Deshauna and some of the other booktubers she's friends with, really, really loved this book, and that is The Final Strife by Sarah El Arifi. And look at the cover, it's so beautiful, we've got all this intricate kind of, um, carving, like white carving, um, all over it, and then under the dust jacket we have this gorgeous illustration of who I presume is the main character. It's a white with red writing hardback. Um, I think the other end page is the same. Yeah. Um, is this a debut? It doesn't say. Anyway, um, I've heard really, really good things about this book. It sounds amazing. Oh, I pulled the, pulled the price off and it's sticky underneath. So that needs dealing with. Um, so yeah, so this has been on my list for, I think since February. I don't even know where it came out. But it's been, it feels like it's been on my list for a really long time. So to see it in hardback for half price was just too much. Too much to resist. So I didn't resist it. So I also um, got a few other books that have been on my list for ages. And um, some of them are, well one of them is continuing a series. <laughs> the rest was not. Okay, one of them is continuing a series. And it is um, Our Lady of Mysterious Ailments by T.L. Hoochie. I had the Library of Dead for a long time and I finally read it this year and I really, really enjoyed it. And I wanted a hardback to match. So I, I was worried that it was not going to be easy for me to get hold of the hardback. And this was one of the last hardbacks. So I'm very pleased to have got a hardback of Our Lady of Mysterious Ailments. Um, and I can now, con well, not now because it's going under the bed, but I can continue that series that I have started and continuing series is one of my goals. Um, and again, it's a series, technically I have started it because I have read the first book. Um, but I want to reread it and like properly fully start the series because that was years ago. Um, but I have mentioned this in a few videos that this is one of the books that I was looking forward to. And that is A Cat and Woman by Nendi Okorafor. And yeah, so I bought it. So um, it's gonna match a Kata warrior and I don't have a Kata witch. <laughs> um, so yeah, I won't be getting that anytime soon with my new plans. So, <laughs> but this is the new one that's in the hardback and easy to get hold of. I don't know if I'm going to get a Kata witch in the hardback to match the other ones, but I can try. But if not, don't worry, I'm still going to get it matching the covers and it's not such a thing. But because I know I could get this one before it kind of got released into paperback, I really wanted to get that one before I did. And again, look at the cover. It's really cool. I really like the covers. And two more. 
So this one has also been on my list of books that I was really excited about this year. This one was published in December, no, September, September in the UK. It came out way earlier in other countries. And that is A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy I. Lin. And one, the cover looks really fascinating. We've got um, koi fish, we've got pinks and purples, we've got um, protagonist holding a pot of tea. Um, and the magic system in here is around the art of tea making. And I've heard so many people um, talk about that this is like a kind of a cozy, whimsical fantasy. And that makes me excited. So it's a cozy fantasy and it's got tea in it. So I have been saying that I really want to read this for a long time. So now I have a copy. And the final one is also a book that has been on my list for a really, really long time. And it's been on my one of the books, one of the nonfiction books that I would treat myself to if I could. Um, and this was actually in an independent bookstore. Um, I'd already broken the ban at this point. And I was in an independent bookstore and um, I was looking to see if they'd got a particular book that I was trying to find and um, they didn't. Um, but I saw this one and thought, I want to support the independent bookstore. And that's What's the Tea by Juno Dawson. And um, I've taken the label off now, but it had a label saying signed copy. So there we go. I've got a signed copy from Juno Dawson. Um, I really enjoyed, it was a while ago that I borrowed it from the library, but Juno Dawson wrote a book called This Book is Gay um, that I really enjoyed reading about. Um, so I really wanted to read this one and it's got illustrations. <laughs> it's full of illustrations because um, it is like aimed at sort of like YA audience. Um, and I just think it looks really cool. I just really like the layout of it. I think it's going to be easy for me to like pull a load of facts out of. Um, we've got tables and more illustrations and things in here. Um, so yeah, it looks even more exciting than what I was hoping because I was like, it, it could have just been full of words. But the fact that it also has like pictures and sort of cool graphics and the way it's like set out, I really enjoy that about nonfiction because sometimes it can lose me. So this sounds like it's going to work for me. Right. So alongside this pile of... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven books. I haven't told you about the books I pre-ordered. <laughs> so, I've written in my little, little notebook here. Um, I have also pre-ordered Rainbow Grey, <laughs> Battle for the Skies. I have pre-ordered Onyeka and The Rise of the Rebels. Um, I have pre-ordered nick blake and the uh, should have written the whole title down but I, <laughs> but I have ordered the new middle grade fantasy by angie thomas that's coming out in april and i will put the name of that book in the description link in the link in the description so you can see it and the story graph link that accompanies it um and i've also um pre-ordered the lives of puppets by tj clune with the pretty waterstone sprayed edges so that's another four. Just calculating. Four. Yeah, four. So that's seven and four. <laughs> Eleven. It's it's late. That's always going to be my excuse. It's late. So because of this big fail, I now need to get myself back on track. <laughs> I have pre-ordered all the books that I'm excited for. I don't need to worry about books coming out that I really want to read. I've got a lot. I've got a lot to be going on with. This is nice for me. I now know more. There is nothing that's being put out into the world right now that is important for me to have because these are all the ones I was the most excited about. It's not that I've just gone and gone, oh, well, there's some things on it. Two for the price of three for the price of two. So I should go and just find something so I can get that bargain. Everything on here is everything that is, is, is things that I really, really, really wanted. It's not just a opportunistic, I fancy some books type of thing. It was specific goal driven books. Um, still doesn't mean that I haven't broken my aim. I've still failed. <laughs> um, and we're going to try again because that's what you do when you fail. You just try again and it's okay. And I'm 
going to do it differently because I think that's going to help me. I forgot I'd neglected some tea and it's now cold. So sad times. I will have to uh, warm it up. If you don't like people warming up their tea, then I'll pretend I said get a fresh one. So what am I going to do to get myself back on this read what you own challenge? <laughs> Many things. I've just read my new goal in here. So we've got read what you own challenge take two. So from January 2023, as of now, I need to read 24 books books that I own. So this means several things. <laughs> I had originally pledged 21. I read eight. So that leaves me 13 books. I bought 11. That includes the pre-orders. So that gives me 24. That's why I'm reading 24. So that starts from January. So all of the books that I earned previously so when I started this at the end of November, everything that I earned in, pardon me, no, the end of October, everything that I earned in November and December, that didn't count to reading what you own because it was brought in after I did my big physical TBR exploration counting video. And that was because it's like I'm gifting myself books because I have them under the bed and then if I do healthy things then I get the books out because that encourages me to be healthy I mean it's been a bit tricky because we've had Christmas followed by one of my son's birthdays so it's all a bit crazy um but getting back on track with all of that <laughs> but it's something that I want to do to try and motivate myself so I'm going to take that away um so now for example I earned in November the book Vanishing Half I'm currently reading The Vanishing Half. Um, so previously that wouldn't have counted because I earned it after I did it, but because I'm pledging from now, that will now count. But say I earned a point today and then suddenly I've got seven points, which means I get a book and I can pull out a book from under the bed, that book won't count. So the new ones from today won't count. Also, the books that I've just showed you, the books I shouldn't have bought I can't earn them yet. So they can go under the bed and I've got them, but I'm not allowed to earn them yet. That is where I'm going to be doing something slightly different. So what I think is going to be like my problem from doing like big sets, I'm going to do a really massive thing of like just reading stuff and not buying it. Then I'll do a buying binge. It's sort of not doing what you want it to do. It just means I'm having a period of stopping and then binging. So that's not really that helpful and practical. So I'm going to change it um, by, and I can't remember who did this, there was someone who came up with this concept of what I'm about to say. And um, if I could remember who you were, I would absolutely credit you that I'm stealing your idea because I think it's brilliant and I think it's really going to work for me. So when I've read 10 books, I get to put a, I get to like bank a book. So that means I've read 10 books, therefore in my imaginary shopping basket, I can put a book, I can buy one book. Now that could be a book from a charity shop. That could be um, a book from a bookstore. One book, doesn't matter what it is. Once that one is gone, that one's gone. So when I've read 20, then another book would be added in there. When I've then read the 24, those imaginary books I've banked, I could then go and buy. So I've got two books available to me, should I want to. But I might choose not to. I might keep going. So if I then read 34 books, or if I then read 30 books, I read another six after my initial 24 pledge, I could then put another book in the bank. So every time I read 10 books, I'm allowed to buy. I'm giving myself permission to buy another book. But I don't have to use it then. But I'm going to be trying to be strict and limit myself and not just go crazy over bargains. That's the plan. Um, but I'm also going to do something for the for the five points as well. So that's the 10 points. So with five points. So when I read 
Um, so when I've read five books, one of these books that I have bought and broken, the book buying ban, read what you own challenge, I can then move from you're not allowed this to you may put this in your drawer of books that you can earn if you get enough healthy points. So after I've read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, after I've read 70 books, all of these will have then moved into the healthy for books drawer. No, that was five. Yes, <laughs> that is correct because, sorry, just stretching up my legs. Ow, Um. So yeah, it's five points gets one of these moved over, but the ten, but these five points that hits a ten would then just be that. It makes sense to me. Okay, so I suppose every like five, but then ten. This doesn't make sense. Does it make sense in my head? Okay. <laughs> so when I get to number five, I get a move over. When I get to book number ten, I bank a hypothetical book. When I get to number fee. 15, the book moves over. 20, hypothetical book bank. 25, book moves over. Okay, there we go. That's what I mean by that. Woohoo, we are possibly getting somewhere. Ba -da -ba -ba. Um, I've written notes and I cannot read my own writing. <laughs> no, I, I did it wrong. I was, I'm, I'm being harsher to myself than I was originally. <laughs> It is every five points I move a book over. So after 35 books, all of these books will move over. I think that's a bit more realistic than 70. <clears throat> also the pre-ordered ones. Yeah, the pre-ordered ones will also move over after a five book reading point stacking. Um, and when I hit my 24 goal for hitting the end goal without buying anything, I will get two more books to put in the hypothetical bank so there will be a total of four books at the end of this challenge for me to hypothetically bank um okay cool Yeah, so just reading my notes, I really should have kept it on pause whilst I worked out what else I wanted to say. Um, so the only exceptions to this are um, when I'm doing read-alongs and I can't access the books. Uh, so my library does not have any of the Rain Wild Chronicles. They're not there. Um, I can get Tawny Man, I can get Fits and the Fool, I can get a random one life ship, just one, just one life ship book. <laughs> but there's no Rain Wild Chronicles in my library across the whole of my city so like whatever library I went to I can't I can't get them um so that puts a bit of a spanner in the works so I'm allowing myself to continue that series like that's not counting as the book buying ban because it's like a commitment <laughs> it's like allowed work um another one as well is um I'm mixed about this one so I really want to do um Blackathon um for February um, and the group book is optional but I want to read it so for the team I'm in I really want to read the group book and um, but again I've looked in my library and I don't have it <laughs> um, I've also checked in bookstores and they don't have it so this looks like it's going to be a world of book searching and um, possibly going into like bigger online ones like world depository book depository so there so i'm allowing myself that possibility but other than that no books so that's my plan wish me luck hopefully i can do it this time please let me know how you are doing um in this um <laughs> how how's it going for you um have you changed your goalposts have you um decided to start again have you not started in the first place because it wouldn't work for you, but you're doing something else? Please let me know in the comments. You know I love a chat. And happy reading, everyone.